Gracious and almighty God, we do thank you, Father, for your goodness and your tender mercy. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Father, for letting us assemble ourselves here this morning, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask you, Father, to touch our minds, and Father, Jesus. Yes. Yes. Give us a mind to be able to say yes to your will, Lord. Yes. And be able to thank you, Heavenly Father, for all your many blessings, Heavenly yes. Father. Yes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for last night's lying down, Heavenly Father, this morning's arising. Yes. And how you blessed us, Heavenly Father, Jesus, to be able to arrive here safely, Lord. Yes. Without any hurt, harm, or danger befall us, Heavenly Father. Yes. And Lord, we ask you, Heavenly Father, Jesus, let your spirit, Heavenly Father, Jesus, reign in the building today, Lord. Yes. Yes. Strengthen us, Heavenly Father, when we weak and torn down, Heavenly Father. Yes. Yes. Build us up and make us strong in your name, Jesus. Yes, and we'll truly thank you, Andy Father, for all the things you're doing for us here. Yes. Lord, right yes. Now, Lord. Yes. Lord, remember the sick and the afflicted, Andy Father, Lord, right now, Lord. Yes. Touch their bodies, Andy Father, Lord Jesus. Yes. Give them a mind, Andy Father, you can be able to call on your name, Lord. Yes. Yes. And as they call on your name, Andy Father, answer them, Andy Father, yes. your mighty name, Jesus. Yes. Lord, continue, Andy Father, you have blessed services this morning, Andy Father. Yes. Yes. Give us, Heavenly Father, any peace of mind, Heavenly Father. Yes, Lord. And be able to keep on keeping on, Lord. Yes. In your mighty name, Jesus. We do thank you, Heavenly Father, you for all things. Yes. Jesus bless you. We ask your name, Jesus, for your sake, Lord. Amen. 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 Yes. We will rejoice and yes. be glad. Hallelujah. so good to be amongst the land of the living yet once more and again. Amen. 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 There's many. Who, as Mother said, wish they could be here this morning. Amen. But yet they have been called either home yes. to glory or if they are in a place where they are unable. Yes. But because he trusted us with breath yes. in our body, yes. we ought to lift up our voice and tell him thank you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. still say that we got work to do. Yes. Amen. We ought to be grateful and ready. Yes to do the work that he has set before us. Amen. 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 It's so good to see everyone this morning. Amen. I know we are, if you're like me, you may not have everything that you want. Amen. But you sure Amen. enough got enough of what you need. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Keep living long enough and may get some of those things that you want too. Amen. If we can be grateful over the things that he has supplied that we need, yes. you can understand that if he never does nothing else for you, he's already done more than that. Amen. 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 So I'm grateful to be here. I just want to share a few things. Again, I thank you for the prayers from my wife. Um, she is doing better. Amen. Praise the Lord. But we know that she still has a ways to go. And so we just want to keep it before the Lord. Amen. 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 I would that she would pray for and with us. We celebrate 14 years of marriage tomorrow. Amen. 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 We'll celebrate 14 years of marriage as of tomorrow. So be in prayer with us. We're going to step away for a few days um, on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. Um, I say I say pray for us because yes. uh, we're celebrating our anniversary with um, two of our youngest grandkids mm -hmm. and a mother-in-law and an auntie from New Jersey. Right. So, uh, right. And they're up in age. Amen. So I, I don't know how much attention she gonna get <laughs> from me because she gonna make sure that the mother ones is gonna want all of her attention. So just pray that me and the babies enjoy ourselves in the pool because that's probably where we gonna stay at for the time we're there. Amen. 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 For God is good. He's good. He's good. Meet me over in the book of John, if you will. Meet me over in the Gospel according to John, chapter number five. I just want to briefly share with you um, today, amen, I'm going to get out of the way quickly so that we have time to meet with Brother Maddie downstairs, and then I want to make sure that everyone, let's not wait until the 7th um, for us to lift her up in prayer for her surgery, but let's begin today, amen, amen. but the Bible says that the effectual, the fervent effectual prayers of the righteous, amen. They avail much. So with that and in that, if we begin praying now yes. for God to set the atmosphere, yes. not just in her home, but also in the operating room. Yes. I want the doctors and the surgeons to feel the presence of God that they've never felt before. Yes. So when they get finished, mm -hmm. they'll give credit to God and not them. Right. Amen. 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 
John chapter 5, we're going to begin at verse number 1. just want to read a few. This is a very familiar passage of Scripture. Um, it simply says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there he is in Jerusalem by the sheep gate, a pool, which is called in Hebrew Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the movement of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time to the pool and stirred up the water. Then whoever stepped in first, after the stirring of the water, was made well of whatever disease he had. Now, a certain man was there who had an infirmity 38 years. When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew that he had already been in that condition a long time. He said to him, do you want to be made well? Verse 7 says, the sick man answered him, sir, I have no man to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. But while I am coming, another steps down before me. Jesus said to him, rise, take up your bed and walk. And immediately the man was made well, took up his bed and walked. And walked. And that was the Sabbath. If I can, for a few minutes, I just want to use as a subject, what are you waiting for? Amen. You may have your seats. What are you waiting for? Father, thank you now for this chance to share your word. We ask you, O God, to clear our minds, hearts, and our spirits to hear clearly what thus saith the Lord. Remove me from self, God, that you may increase yourself in me, that you speak. When they hear me, they hear you. They don't hear me, but they hear you. When they see, they don't see me, but they see you. Holy Spirit, have your way. The words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, thy strength and thy redeemer. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. What are you waiting for? Hmm. When we look at this passage of scripture, there's so much that is going on in this text. Mm -hmm. There's a lot going on in this text. Yes. We find that Jesus himself was just passing through. Mm -hmm. He wasn't coming to that specific or particular place. And that's an indication to allow us to know that you don't have to have an appointment with Jesus for him to come through and mm -hmm. satisfy your need. Amen. Amen. I got a witness. Amen. Some, some folk think you got to get in his appointment book. I want you to know and understand that if you know Jesus and that you are a child of him, you are always in his appointment book. Amen. Amen. He never sleeps nor slumbers, so therefore he never has to have a specific time, but it lets us know in the word that he may not come when we want him to, but when he comes, he is on time. Amen. Amen. And so now we find here that as Jesus is coming, the word says that he is coming and he passes by the sheep gate. Mm -hmm. He passes by the sheep gate, a pool, which is in the place that they call Bethesda. Yes. This particular pool, the sheep gate, this pool, this was in the day it was something that was used for the washing and the cleansing of the sheep. Mm -hmm. In other words, they would go in one way and they would be washed and then they would come out. The other way. But now we find in this particular passage that there were no sheep in the pool, but yet there were people that had all kind of ailments, Amen. all kind of diseases. But I want you to see how uh, how 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 graceful, should I say, how graceful this is. Because remember, here we find it says Bethesda has five porches. Mm -hmm. Then it says in verse number five that there was a man that was laying on one of the porches. Mm -hmm. If we look at how good God is, we find grace all through this whole passage. Yes. What do you know? You, you, you recognize that the number five is the number of grace. Mm -hmm. Have we got a witness? Mm -hmm. Five is the number of grace. So we look at John chapter five, grace. Then it's five porches, grace. And the subject of this passage is identified in verse 5. Mm -hmm. Grace. So now we see grace is being exuded all through this passage of Scripture. But what, what I found to be very interesting was, upon five porches, it was a multitude of people 
that had various types of illnesses. Mm -hmm. No matter what type of illness you had, it was still solidified as being sick. And it was a bunch of people in one place mm -hmm. that all had the same type of condition being sick. Mm -hmm. But yet ailments were different. And they all laid up on the porch, on the porches, mm -hmm. waiting for the same thing. Mm -hmm. Isn't it amazing? It's almost as if, uh, uh, I say this all the time, I say, see, we, we, we're the kind of folk that, that we don't have to know what it is to be in line 12 hours before the store opens if they said it's free. I got somebody to pray with me there. Let's, let somebody say tomorrow morning, Pop, that they're going to have something for free at Best Buy. Amen. Shantia, I don't care. You ain't even got to advertise what it is. Just say it's free for the first 500 people that are there. The store opens at 6 a.m. I guarantee you mm -hmm. at midnight there's going to be about 200 people in line mm -hmm. waiting for something that's free that they have no idea what it is. But it's free. Hallelujah. Have we got a witness? Hallelujah. And so therefore now we find that these people had heard about a movement of the water and the potential of them being able to be healed. So now we find sick folk that made their way to a place mm -hmm. for where they heard about Yes. Amen. About a movement of the water. This is what got me though. Now you have, it, it, the Bible says that the movement of the water, that an angel would come down at a certain time. It didn't say that the water was always moving. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that an angel would come down at a certain time and stir the water and the first person that stepped in the water that was being stirred was healed. Mm -hmm. So that kind of let me know that if the angel didn't come at least once a day, then the multitude of people really never decreased simply because the movement only came on occasion. Amen, amen. In that and with that, I want you to understand that even though grace was established here, there was nobody that really operated in the aspects or the power of who God was because what they believed was that it needed to be, the water needed to be moving by something yeah. in order for them to be healed rather than them realizing that the power was not in the stirring but the power was in the faith. Amen. 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 Yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. There's too many times, can I, can I just talk about it for a second? There's too many times we spend too much money Pastor West, we got folk all the time that want to hear these televangelists. And they tell you, if you just send me $14.99, you can get this prayer cloth out and pray it over it and sprinkle it with the water from Jerusalem. It's got such an anointing on it, Brother Mike, that when it reaches you from the mail, I'll tell you things are going to change in your life like they never have before. You just need this prayer cloth. It has been saturated. Mm -hmm. huh? mm -hmm. It's been baptized in the pool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Where Jesus was baptized, I'll tell you, it's powerful. So now you're paying someone $14.99 plus shipping and handling to get something that you don't know anything about. Mm -hmm. But because they said this is what it was, and then you get this thing and believe that this thing is the thing that's going to cure or heal or change your circumstance. But baby, I come by to tell you, if you keep your $14.99 to yourself and get down on your knees for a little while and believe that God can and that God will, I come by to tell you, you'll be $14 ahead and still blessed because you trusted in God and it was your faith that allowed you to be healed. Amen. And not your $14 that you gave somebody to laugh mm -hmm. at you. Yeah. But we find that here this man was laying here and the Bible declares that he had been attempting mm -hmm. to get into this water but it says every time he begins to make a move that somebody would step down before him. Yeah. That led me to believe that he wasn't desperate enough. Because I come by to tell you that I knew that if I had to get in the water to get healed and I was tired of being the way I am for 38 years, yes, I'm going to shake, rattle, roll, scoop, poop, anything I got to do to get yes. to the water. Matter of fact, I'm going to hang on back to the edge of the last rock right at the thing so when the water moves again, I'm just going to let go and fall in. Now we got a witness. I don't care what it takes, but if I need to get in there, you might beat me this time, but before it's all said and done, I'm going to get myself in that water and not worry about who I got, because as long as I got Jesus, I don't need him. So the Bible says 
that this man now comes face to face with a man by the name of Jesus who asks him the simple question. He says, listen to me, don't you want to be made whole? Yes. Here I know, listen, we become guilty by what we are surrounded by. We become a product of our environment. And I need you to know something. Watch this. Sick folk can make folk sick. Amen. Amen. You get too many sick folk in a room and a healthy person will come in and become sick if they stay around them sick folk too long. Have I got a witness? That's the reason we can't hang around with negative people because eventually negativity will jump off on you. But I need you to know that when you stand in the power of God, you can recognize something that you should not be attached to before you get too attached to it and you should be able to walk away with this man sitting at a pool with all of these people that are sick. And I can tell you, I can guarantee you, it wasn't nothing going on but complaining. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. Everybody talking about, and have you ever been around a bunch of people that will tell you about, they give you a story, should I tell us one of these things? Well, you know, baby, I woke up this morning and my back was sore. And then somebody in that story gonna have to one-up you. Have you ever been around them people? Your, your back was hurting, but then when they get up now, they back was hurting, but not only they back, but at the top of their neck and behind the lower part of their head. Then somebody want to get on them, well, baby, my feet was hurting. And and, 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 and and we don't need to be around a bunch of next. We need somebody to say, well, you know what? Did you ever give it to the Lord? Amen, amen. Did you cast your cares upon the Lord? Did you believe that he gave? Did you lay hands on yourself and decree that you are healed by his stripes? Yes, hallelujah. Did, did you ever access what God says that we have the power and the authority to access? Did you speak those things that are not as though they were in the name of Jesus and by the power of the blood of Jesus? Did you say to yourself that I am more than a conqueror, that I can surpass all of this that I'm going through? Did you say to yourself that this thing may be in me, but it's only temporary? Did you remind yourself that it might just be a thorn to allow you to remember that God's grace is still sufficient? Did you tell yourself that I can rise from this? Yeah. 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 Or did you just lay there a while with a little pity? I wonder why you can't hear from the Lord. Well, it's hard to hear from the Lord when your ears are covered up with a whole bunch of stuff that you are believing that ain't true. Yes. The enemy will make you believe that you are weaker and less than you are if you allow him to. And he'll do that by influencing you with your circumstances and your surroundings. But you've got to look beyond what it is and look into what it really is. You've got to look beyond... The, the strategic plan of the enemy to make you believe that you're in a place of no return. You've got to look to the heels from which cometh your help and understand that if I keep my hand in God's unchanging hand, no matter how low I am in this pit, God says he's with me, and not only is he with me, but when he's ready, he'll pull me up. So the Bible says on these five porches, there was a whole bunch of people of all different types of sicknesses, blind, lame, paralyzed. And they were all waiting. The only thing I think we should all be waiting on, we should be waiting on the coming of the Lord. Yes, hallelujah. And while we're waiting on the coming of the Lord, we should be waiting on the Lord. Yes. Like a good waiter that says, how can I serve you? Because right. our job should be to serve because the Bible says that we got to work while it is day. Because yes. when nighttime comes, no man shall be able to work. In other words, we've got to get it in while we are still here. Got breath in our body. It doesn't matter. Watch this. If I'm lame, it doesn't mean that my praise is lame. If, 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 if I'm blind, it doesn't mean that my voice is, is muted. If, if I can't walk, it don't mean I can't lift up my hands. If, if, it doesn't matter what I got going on in my body. If my mind is in a good enough state to give God praise, then I come by to tell you that even in my worst, I can still glorify. So the Bible says that all of these people were waiting for the water to move. Mm -hmm. We're all waiting. Can you imagine just a whole bunch of people? That's like a church being filled right now. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and them saying that the only person that's going to be healed, mm -hmm. the first person that gets in the front of the church when the lights go dim is going to be healed. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the ruckus that'll go on when the mm -hmm. lights start getting dim? 
in the church. If people kicking there, ain't gonna be nobody polite walking up here saying it's my turn. Amen. But you're gonna have a bunch of people bum rushing. That's why I'm glad that Jesus is a graceful God. And he, he's an all-powerful and all-knowing God. So if he comes in and says, I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna move that everybody may be healed at the sound of my voice or at the moving of the wind or at the dimming of the light, I'm glad that all I got to do to get what he said I got to have is have some faith. Amen. If he comes in and says, when the lights get dim, you'll be healed. If I don't believe that I'm gonna be healed, then when the lights come back on, I'm gonna still be sick. Amen. Because it's not the lights that's going to heal me, but it's my faith that when I see the sign that he gave me, it's the faith that I have inside that activates the power that he says will heal my body. It comes from having now faith. Yeah, the substance of things hoped for. Mm -hmm. The evidence of things not seen. Yes, Lord. So we find this man having to talk with Jesus. And the man is now complaining because he said, I ain't got nobody. Mm -hmm. And I like to talk to ladies when I say this. I say, sometimes you're in the condition you're in because you're waiting on a man to do what only the man can do. Amen. Amen. You don't need a man to love you if you understand how Jesus is. He is love. And if you can be content with Jesus loving you, he can prepare you for the man that he has created for you. He loves you. Have I got a witness? Sometimes we get husbands, women, I'm going to speak to women, sometimes we get husbands because he, 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 he said he's so fine. Mm. He, 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 he got his, Bob, he got them tight little, his little brother shirts on. Yeah. <laughs> trying to show, show his muscles. Amen. He, Mike, he's one of them ones that think he's still on the jailhouse yard where he's walking around with his shirt off all the time. You in a restaurant, why you got your shirt off? Nobody wants to see your muscles. Amen. Shirt off. Amen. But see, that is not attractive when it comes down to being a woman of God and understanding that God has something for you. Because the Bible says that man looks at the outside. Amen. 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 But God looks at the inner part. All right, all right. And if the God is in you, he can be fat, short, and stumpy. Yeah. But if he got the love of God on the inside, and that's who God said he has for you, baby, let me tell you, the love that he has for you is bigger than the empire yeah. Hallelujah. I wish Hallelujah. I had a witness. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. But now we find that this man complains that he don't have no help from a man. Mm -hmm. Not realizing that he was actually talking to the man. Yes. Yeah. And the man himself didn't have to extend a hand, but all he had to do was speak a word. Amen. And I want that you understand that when you can get connected with the man, the man don't have to be on the scene for him to speak a word in the midst of where you are for things to happen right there. He don't have to be there. All he got to do is send his word right there. Amen. But this man was lucky because this man was laying there and Jesus was speaking to him. Now watch, I want you to catch how this works. Jesus spoke to him and he asked him, he says, don't you want to be made whole? Yes. All right, all right. Instead of the man just giving Jesus a regular answer and say yes, he said yes, but I. Our problem is we always blaming everything on but I. I would go to church, but I. Yeah. I would pay my tithes, but I. Yeah. I would join the choir, but I. Yeah. My question to y'all is this. Has anybody ever met but I? Because yeah. I need to talk to his mama and his daddy because he has created too much habit, especially in the church and with my kids. Did you do that? I would have done it, mama, but I. I would have done it, daddy, but I. But I don't need to live here. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Come, on. Hallelujah. Come on, get your body. The Christian is so far behind status quo because they're always blaming but I. Mm. But if you got to the place where you realize, you say, I am more than a conqueror. Amen. Through Christ Jesus, if you realize that I am the head and not the tail, if you realize greater is he that is within me than he that's within the world, if you realize yes. that God says that not only am I with you, but I'll give you everything you need. If you realize that, then you'll never have to, 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 to blame anything on yes, but I. All right, all right. The man told Jesus, but I don't have a man, Pastor West, but I don't have no homeboys. I don't have nobody that believes enough in me. I don't have 
uh, what it takes to get in here. I don't have. In other words, I'm complaining because right now everybody else is getting what I wish I had. And now because they're moving faster than me, I'm believing that maybe it's not meant for me to get what I have to get. But Jesus stepped up and asked him a simple question. Do you want to be made? And when he says yes, and after he gave his little, his dissertation about why he wasn't, Jesus simply says, get up. Yes, yes. What I like about that is this When the Bible says that immediately The man rose It takes me over When we look at the man That was laying at the gate of beautiful Peter and John looked at him and says Silver and gold have I not But what I have I give unto you Reached his hand down And the Bible says immediately the man's ankles and his knees got strong enough for him to stand up. The man at the pool of Bethesda, he got up. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. But I don't think many people recognize that isn't it amazing that he got up and walked, mm -hmm. but never ever got in the water. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So that was a clear indication that the water was not the component for healing. Mm -hmm. But that the water itself was just an indication to allow people to know uh, 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 this is something that is, it could activate your faith because if you see people walking in and getting healed, maybe your mind will get to the place where you say, there is healing at this place. Yes. All right, all right, all right. Whether it comes from the movement of the water or not, at least my mind is focused on the fact that I can be healed. All right, all right. All right. So the Bible lets us know that this man got up immediately. I find out that there was no stirring of the water. I found out that there were still people waiting to get in. I found out that there was nothing different going on, but yet at the spoke, at the word spoken from Christ, this man rose up from a place that he was stuck in for 38 years. He got up and the Bible says it was on the Sabbath. It was a day that it wasn't supposed to happen, but baby, I come to tell you when Jesus is on the scene, there is no day that things ain't supposed to happen. Because what I find out is, he is the sustainer of time. He is the creator of every day. He is the one with all power in his hands. And when he says it, that settles it. That's it, and that's all. And this man rose up, and I can come by to tell you, I know it kind of freaked him out, because he realized there is no movement of the water. I don't have no splish splash taking the bath, but I got up from where I was for 38 years, and it was only because the man of God who is the one that says that from our belly will flow rivers of living water. He is the living water. He is the power. He is the source. He is everything we need. And he spoke a word to my condition. Hallelujah. Yes. Isn't it amazing how God will take you and put you in the middle of a condition or a situation? He'll put you in a place where folk won't believe because everybody is looking at the negative. And God will speak to you. That's why you've got to have a relationship with him. Because God will speak to you in the midst of a crisis. When everybody around you is being negative. And he'll tell you it's time for you to get up and start moving. And when he tells you that, it's simply because of this. When he tells you to get up and move, the people around may have some form of faith. But I want you to understand that the Bible when he says if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And sometimes you've got to get up as he's lifting you up so that he can begin to draw. Because if somebody around you know the condition that you're in and see you rise from that condition and don't see nobody around to help you out, they got to know that it has to be the goodness of God that's resting upon your life. They have to realize that it's something greater than what they're going through that helps you sustain and get up from where you are. And at that moment they may ask who do you know and what you got going on but as for me and my house we are going to bless the Lord at all times we're going to seek his face while he can be found we're going to give him glory no matter what our circumstances is and when the sickness comes in it seems to overwhelm us we're going to wait patiently upon the Lord with a good spirit knowing that if he shows up when he shows up he's going to show out but our mind should say God if you never deliver me from this all oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. It doesn't matter if I don't come from this, you've already been better to me than I can be to myself. And I know God, if you don't heal me from it, you'll give me the peace to deal with it while I'm dealing with it. And when it's all said and done, you'll still get all of the glory. The Bible says that this man, he got up. 
And he took his bed and he began to walk. Mm -hmm. After 38 years mm -hmm. of not being able to move, mm -hmm. not being able to, this is what gets me. If my legs haven't moved and supported my body for 38 years, mm -hmm. usually you have to go through a form of what they call therapy Amen. to learn how to walk again. Yeah. But when the power of Jesus is set up on your situation, Amen. I come by to tell you you'll go through years of therapy and a crinkling of an eye. Amen. Because once he speaks to you, you will get up and your body has got to fall subject to the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. But you've got to believe that the power of God is still operating in the midst of your life. Amen. Have I got a witness here? Amen. We've got to stop making, but making it seem as if if God don't move right now, that God ain't going to move. Amen. But sometimes God just want to see how patiently you can wait upon him. Amen. Isaiah 40, 31 says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Every once in a while, you've got to wait just to get your strength back. You've got to wait because sometimes while you're laying there, God is trying to show you some things that you you missed while you were moving around. He want to show you some lessons that you missed when you was too busy. Sometimes when you wait, he want to show you which way to go instead of you going the way you were going. Sometimes when you wait, he want to speak to you because you wasn't listening the last time. So, sometimes when you wait, he want to give you a peace that surpasses the understanding, but that you can acknowledge that it's his peace and it's not yours. Sometimes when you wait, you can sit back and have God come and talk to you in a way that you haven't never received from him before. Simply because when we're too busy, we don't recognize what he's speaking to us. Sometimes you've got to wait because there's danger ahead of us. And if we wait long enough, God will clear the obstacle out the way so there's a smooth transition to where we're going. So therefore, you've got to stop complaining about waiting and understand that they didn't wait upon the Lord. Ah, and when my strength gets renewed, I can keep on pushing. And when I get my wings as an eagle, that means I can fly over the next circumstance that I deal with. And, hell, and hover up there until God shows up on my situation. I wish I had a witness in here right now. And if I was like the man at the pool of Bethesda, even though every once in a while in my fleshly nature I might stop and think, why have God forsaken me? And reflect back to Job. Job lost it all. But he says, though you slay me, Lord, yet will I trust you. So while I'm laying here unable to get in the water, yet will I trust you. While I'm laying here and unable to move, Yet will I trust you. While I'm laying here waiting on you to show up, yet will I trust you. And if the water never moves, God, just speak a word into my situation. Yet will I trust you. Because when it's all said and done, I couldn't stand up and give you glory, but I rolled over and praised your name. I couldn't jump for joy, but I lifted up my hands and my spirit began to leap. And when you bring me from that circumstance, somebody else that watched me go through will understand. That it's not what I went through. Right. But it was how I went through it. Yeah. Right. That got me out of it. That's right. Have mm -hmm. I got a witness? Amen. Paul simply says when he asked God, he says, God, remove this thorn. Mm -hmm. God says, no, I'm not taking it away. I want you to be reminded. Yeah. That my grace is sufficient. Yeah, the yeah. Bible didn't say that the man got up and walked straight. It didn't say the man got up with a limp. It didn't say any of these things. But it did tell us about a few people in the Bible that may have still had some evidence of what happened to them. But it didn't prohibit them from praising the Lord. Right, uh, the right. Lord never left Paul's flesh. And the Bible lets us know that Joshua never, 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 never walked straight again after he wrestled all night with that angel. Have I got a witness? Uh, the Bible says that and when he touched his hip, he got in with a limp. But what did he say? Lord, he says, he says, I'm going to wrestle with him, but I'm not going to let go until you bless me. Yeah, right. And when he got blessed, he got evidence to remind him it was God that blessed him and not him that blessed him himself. I'm not a witness. And so though it didn't say that the man walked straight or the man had a limp, I come by to tell you he had enough evidence going on around him and with him to let somebody know that it was God that brought him up and brought him out. Have I got a witness? was what? Faith. If we look at the friends that rolled down their friend through the roof of the building. And when Jesus told that man to get up and walk, have I got a witness? There was no medicine. There was no surgery. It was a word that was spoken. And immediately the man was healed and got up and began to move. What am I trying to say? Let God be immediate in your life. Let his word be immediate in your life. Let his power be immediate in your life. And the only way that this thing can happen is if you can activate it by this thing called faith. If you can believe that 
God can and that God will, then God show up will. And even if he don't, that don't mean that you're supposed to stop believing him. You're supposed to believe it because I guarantee you that he didn't show up on your behalf more than one time in your life. And he has showed time and time again that he is sovereign, that he is grateful, and that he is still great, grateful, and he is still faithful. He has showed you over and over again that he'll still bless you in the midst of your storm. He'll still allow you to be blessed in the midst of all of your unrighteousness, that he still yeah. loves you beyond you. So what are you yeah. tripping for? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My question is, do you have the power to get up? Amen. Amen. And stop waiting on something that God has already given you the power over. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Amen. If somebody is diagnosed with something, you're not supposed to fall subject to the diagnosis mm -hmm. or the ailment, but you're supposed to tell the ailment, I ain't got to live with you, but baby, you got to show up and live with me. Yes. The ailment have to live with you. That means that the, the God in you has power over the ailment and the ailment does not have power yeah. over you. Chantel, it's, it's a trip because when people sit back and they tell you oh, I got these migraines and, and I can't do nothing but my head start hurting. Yeah. I dare you to get up and tell that migraine, don't give that migraine no eccentric, no I no bad feel. You give that, I, that, that migraine some Jesus. You tell the migraine, today I'm not living with you, but you're going to live with me. And by the power of the Holy Ghost, migraine, I tell you that that you better back up and back down because I'm not going to stop moving today because you decide you want to act up. But my God says that I got power over these things. And since I know I got the power, I'm going to speak the power of God into the midst of the atmosphere because I realize that the Bible says that in the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. In the name of Jesus, demons will flee. Josh, I got to talk to my situation. If I get up on my knees and hurt knees, you better bow down to the power of God. Because I'm going to keep on moving this morning. Back, you better act right. Because God says that I'm the head and not the tail. God says that I got power. God says that by his stripes I am healed. Matter of fact, he told me I can lay hands on myself. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Brother, you wake up and them eyes is acting crazy. You tell them eyes, you better cut it out uh, this yeah, morning. Yeah. In, the In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Because as he told the man at the pool of Bethesda, mm. get up, mm. take yes. up your bed and walk. That's yes. right, that's right. It's the same one that's giving me the power that says, eyes act right. Mm. Focus. Yes. Do what yes. you've been created to do. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes. This whole lesson is to allow us to know that defeat comes by a lack of faith. Mm. Yes. Defeat comes from the inability to activate the promises that God has established yes. with us. Mm. Defeat comes from the negligence of using what he gave us Amen. to overcome. Mm. Defeat comes when we try to fight for victory mm. when he's already given us the power to fight from victory. Yes. Oh, I wish I had to. Yes. Right. Defeat comes when well, we believe that the enemy is bigger than the power of God. Mm -hmm. Defeat comes when our countenance drops yes, and our faith is watered down. Yes, Lord. Defeat comes. But no matter how big or how strong the enemy is or what tactics he put on us or what obstacles we face, mm -hmm. if we can just keep our hands yes. in God's unchanging hands. All right, all right. If we can just be with a posture of surrenderance yes, and let God know, God, I surrender all mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus. Jesus. And while we're surrendering, give the highest praise. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Because you confuse the enemy when you're going through hell and high water. Mm -hmm. You confuse him when you praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. Because at that moment, he thinks that you should be like the man of Bethesda at the pool saying, I ain't got nobody. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. To help me through this situation. Amen, amen. Sure you got somebody. Mm. Why don't you call on him? Yes. You didn't call Tyrone. <laughs> mm. He didn't answer. Yes. You didn't call Pookie. <laughs> he too busy. Amen. You didn't call Nene. Mm. She getting dressed to go to the club. Mm. <laughs> you didn't call Joe Mama. 
and your mama told you you better pray. Amen. Because that's the one that can help you better than anybody else. That's right. And what other witness? Yes, Lord. So when you get reminded of the power, the Bible says, not by power, mm. not by might, mm. but by the Spirit yes, Lord. of the living God. Yes, Lord. Stop worrying about mm. all that other stuff. Yes. And connect to the Spirit. Yes. Because through the Spirit, all things. Mm. Made possible. Right. Amen. Amen. Come on, witness. Yes. Amen. My question to you this morning is, what are you waiting for? Mm -hmm. Get up. Amen. And walk. That's right. Come on, put your hands together. I'm going to tell y'all it's something funny because I'm looking at this clock <laughs> and I'm saying, wow, it's early. Amen. And the crazy part is I ain't even looked at the numbers to, to see how early. I just noticed that the big head is in the same place it was when we started chasing the God. And I'm, I'm sitting here and saying, I'm like, God, time was moving slow. What's going on? And I'm looking at it and I look at my iPad and I say, Ooh, we, now I notice that it's say 115 up there. <laughs> so can I share with y'all what? We talking about this stuff and Next service, I, I'm, I'm teaching on spiritual warfare, and it's so funny because I experienced it this morning like never before, and I guess that's probably why I'm tripping the clock. <laughs> I'm up and making sure that all my notes and everything is together. Then my iPad just completely blanked out. Mm. Never did this before. Yeah. So my notes transferred to my computer. I was like, oh, all right, great. My notes transferred to my computer. Then I pushed the button to continue to... to, to, to Finish up my notes. Mm -hmm. And all the notes disappeared. Amen. Gone. Can't find them nowhere. Mm -hmm. and my wife said, well, maybe, maybe it just paused. Can you check the history? Well, on iPad, on the iPhone, the, on the Mac systems, the whatever you want to call it, when it's gone, on the notes, when it's gone, it's gone. It ain't no recovery. It ain't no back, back up. It ain't no none of that. When it's gone, it's gone. It ain't erased. It's just gone. Amen. <laughs> So, so I told her, I said, you don't think that we can go into spiritual warfare today without the general getting tested mm. with spiritual warfare. Right? Amen, amen. I said, so if I fall subject to being spiritually attacked and buckled, mm. then what good is a lesson for me to teach? Oh, amen. 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 Yes, yes. But I'm a believer that what he put, let me put on the notes. He didn't already put it so much in my spirit. Amen. And then what I typed out, maybe it did what I wanted to say. Yes, Amen. Maybe he made it erase because he wanted to speak. Hallelujah. Come on here, somebody. Hallelujah. Amen. So that's when they have that old song that says, I will trust yeah. in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. In the Lord till I But it's how I do what I do. Yes. 
that sustains my victory. Amen? Right, right. You got to know when to hold them, mm. when to hold them. Right, you got right. to know when to swing yeah. and when to stand. Right. You got to know when to shoot mm. and when to keep from shooting. Right. You got to know when to yell yeah. and when to be quiet. Right. You got to know when to run right. and then you got to know when to cease from running. Right. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And every once in a while, God tell you to run, not because you're scared of the enemy, but because yeah. he's ready to tear up what's around you, and he don't want you to get caught up in the right. devastation. Have a God with you? Come on, Mr. Yes. Amen. So let us bow. We thank God. Amen. Give God some praise. Yeah. Give God some praise for us being able to have the power to get up no matter where we are right. and what we're going through. We can get up, we can rise up, and we can keep it moving. Yes, because until God says it's time for us to come home, yes. that means we still got to keep one foot in front of the other. That's right. That's right. Our head held high, mm -hmm. our arms lifted up, yes. and moving towards the prize yes. of the high call, right. which is in Christ Jesus. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you. We honor and we praise your name for all that you've done and all that you have yet to do. Holy Spirit, we love you, we honor you, we trust you. And we ask you, God, that when we have those Bethesda moments, that you remind us, Father God, that it's not the tangible thing that makes us whole. But God, even in the tangible, it can't make us whole if it's not touched by your power, spoken to by your authority. So God, we ask you that you continue to speak to every situation that we encounter. That we may be able to know and understand that our faith and our trust in you is not in vain. Yes. But at the time we need it the most, God, you will let your power show up yes. on our behalf. Yes. Yes. And where people think it's one way, you will allow it to know it's just your way. Right. And your right. way is the only way. Right. Even with those that got in the water. We still know, God, that their faith and the movement of the water at that moment, they, they were healed, but it still came from your authority. Yeah. So we're asking, God, that you allow us to, to, to continue to stand in the supersession of your power, your authority, your love, your grace, and your mercy. Yes. And let us, God, continue to abide in your secret place and lift up your name yes. and then that you will allow father god men to be uh drawn unto you by the praise that we give about who you are in our yes. lives yes. and we thank you god we honor yes. you we give your name all praise honor yes. and glory yes. now this is a time in our service where someone who don't know christ for the pardon of their sins may want to come to know him or you may want to rededicate your life if that is you just simply raise your hands where you are just simply raise your hand amen and then there is there's another call for someone who may want to um, become a member of the church. Uh, we have churches that have names, but we understand that the church is us mm -hmm. and that the body of Christ is the place that we need to make sure that we're adopted to. Mm -hmm. And we have the churches here, Cedar Grove and Cornerstone, that God assigns for the growing and the edifying of your spirit. Yes. And so if that is you and you want to join, then please just show by the raising of your hand. Amen. 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 We see that there is none, but there is still yet room at the cross. Father, we thank you. We give you honor. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the matchless name of Jesus the Christ, we do pray and ask it all. All of God's children said amen. 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 Now it's time that we take up our love offering.